Now it's time to enter into the scary zone of decluttering. Let's talk junk closets. They're my old sneakers, they're worn out, but I was holding on to them to do yard work. I'm moving into a condo. This is the point where I feel slightly overwhelmed, but also know somebody has to do this. So I'm not gonna lean into that feeling, but. Welcome to my channel. My name is Prisca Jordan, and I am deathly allergic to piles of junk that steal my focus, energy, and time. So this is not going to be your traditional decluttering video with drastic results. I cannot give you that cathartic experience of watching someone empty half of their home because decluttering is a regular part of my process throughout the year. But I can confidently share these 35 things I've decluttered from my home that I have no regrets about. And in fact, I'm currently decluttering ahead of a big move, so I can show you what it looks like in my home. Today we'll work through the bathroom, linen closet, living room, kitchen, wardrobe, and some miscellaneous items that need a good strong purge too. Let's get started. To me, the bathroom is an easy place to start with decluttering. These are things that you can declutter a couple of times a year. Number one, old makeup. Number two, old skincare. And number three, half empty bottles that you no longer use. Now, have you ever wondered why you end up with so much clutter? I have a hypothesis, maybe mull it over. It's called the sunk cost fallacy and the Oxford Dictionary defines it as the phenomenon whereby a person is reluctant to abandon a strategy or course of action because they have invested heavily in it, even when it is clear that abandonment would be more beneficial. And that's how I think of clutter. It's not a beneficial thing to hold on to. And I'm a very visual person, so what I think of is like the fruit basket on my kitchen counter. I typically have bananas in there, and sometimes they go bad. And I'm not talking about that would make a good banana bread bad, I'm talking about they're rotten. Now those bananas were beneficial to me for a while, but if I keep holding onto them because I paid 35 cents per banana, <laughs> then they're going to continue to rot, they'll attract bugs, roaches, things I don't want to be around to witness. So it's no longer beneficial to me. In the same way, all your stuff was beneficial for some time, but we need to figure out what's still good for you and what's gone bad. So your home can feel fresh and welcoming to you again. Starting with your bathroom, what old makeup, skincare, or other bottles is it time to get rid of because they're not being used and they're not beneficial to you anymore? Hopefully this can be an easy category for you as well. The first item to declutter in your linen closet is ratty towels. What'd you say about my towels? I said, not like your ratty old towels. Ratty towels? I have ratty towels? A common objection I hear for decluttering old towels is that, well, they're not that bad. Your ratty towels are no longer good. It's time to let go of them. They're not actually benefiting you. You're not even using them. It's time to let go. If you escape that item unscathed, <laughs> here's one that might get you ratty bed sheets. Honestly, I really just don't like buying new bed sheets, so I understand any of these pieces, like you don't wanna buy something new when you have something that works. But is it really working is the question. If at the end of the day you crawl into bed and you feel those sheets and they just make you cringe a little, it might be time to get rid of them. Another linen to get rid of is mismatched items. Now what I personally do, if I have a towel that's missing a face cloth or vice versa, I'll just go buy the thing that matches it because at least I already have one piece that works for me. Item number seven on our list is that old blanket that you're never going to actually use again, but it's sentimental, so you keep it in your closet as clutter, and you've moved it to multiple houses, and your friends and family think you're crazy for it. Here's an alternative. Take a picture of it, keep it in your photo box, but don't let your house become a museum of unusable objects that have had some significance to you in the past. Your house should be something that helps you today. And if that memory of the blanket helps you, then keep it in a photo, not the big old blanket taking up a whole shelf in your linen closet. Now it's time to enter into the scary zone of decluttering, junk closets. Everybody has one. Some people have multiple. I have one and it has a lot of disorganized clutter. Let's go tackle this big job.
This is the point where I feel slightly overwhelmed, but also know somebody has to do this and it needs to get done. So I'm not gonna lean into that feeling. In the living room, we're mostly talking about decorative things and a common objection to decluttering decor is, but it was nice when I bought it. And that's true, but also, is it still nice? Let's go through this list and see if there are any items in your living room that are clutter. So the first one is outdated decor. Now, when I use the word outdated, I think sometimes people have this idea that you have to keep up with the trends. So everybody painted their house gray five years ago, and it was like the farmhouse chic thing 10 years ago, and so now it's outdated. Listen, if you resonate with farmhouse chic, then you keep that for as long as you resonate with it. I'm more of like a glam kind of person, very colorful, and also I've never lived on a farm. So that's never been my style. And my style might be outdated to someone else, but to me it's up to date because it's my current style. Quit buying decor pieces that do not match your current style. You can start making this transition by undecorating or decluttering those pieces that you don't like anymore. And here's another thing to look at when you're in the living room your unused candles. Now I want you to check. If there is dust on top of the wax of your candle, that means it's not getting used. Now I just made a video about using your nice clothes instead of saving them for someday, one day when you have an event to go to. And I feel the same way about candles and pieces that you buy to make yourself feel special at home, but then you never use them so you never feel special at home. Either use it because it'll make you feel special or declutter it because you don't actually really like it. Now, I personally am kind of sensitive to those fake candle smells, so I don't even own, I think I maybe own one candle now that I can tolerate, but I mostly just use my oil diffuser, which is also something that seems to be quite outdated. Everybody was on the essential oil trend several years ago. I'm still on it. I love it. It doesn't mess with my sinuses, my allergies, nothing. I just have my diffuser and I use it almost every day. Another couple of living room items to declutter are ratty blankets and worn out throw pillows. And let's be honest, most of the time you do not need to actually replace these items because you have plenty to spare. But if you have like your favorite pillow that is just looking really tattered and anytime someone comes over, they don't even want to touch it, it might be time to thank it and part ways with it. A couple of years ago, I watched the Minimalist documentary and I remember getting kind of scared when they were going to address books because I have way more books than anything else in my house, but I love my books and I actually go back and reference them. Sometimes even just seeing the title jogs my memory of some lessons I learned from it. So I love my books and I was kind of nervous that they were going to say, you only need like five or 10 books. But what they actually said was that it's more of are you using your stuff or is it using you in the sense of is it actually helping your life or is it just cluttering your home and your head? So in this case, I would definitely say books are my indulgence of things that I keep too many of, but I never want to keep books that I just didn't like. So if I didn't finish it because I didn't like the book, it can go. So let's go through my bookcase and see if there's anything that I just really don't need anymore. This is a book that was gifted to me and I just never read because I wasn't really interested. So this one I'm going to donate and someone who is interested will pick it up and read it. Oh man, I just found a book that I never read, but I kind of forgot about. It was gifted to me, and during the time I had like three books open, so I didn't start reading it, but I do want to read this one. Just found a set of notes from a book that I'm probably not going to look at these notes again, so <laughs> definitely taking that out, but keeping the book. You know, the kitchen tends to get cluttered because we just have so much storage. And if you're someone who said, I don't have enough storage in my kitchen, 
let me present this fact to you. I recently visited the Biltmore in Asheville, North Carolina, and it is a palatial place. It's the largest residential building in all of the United States. And even in that home, which has, I believe, a hundred bedrooms, I don't know, fact checkers can get me because that's definitely not precise, but the kitchen has less storage than my apartment kitchen. See, if you're comparing your kitchen storage to anywhere else in the United States where we're used to having such huge houses, especially the new ones, then it might seem like you need more storage, but it might be that you just have too much clutter in your already well-supplied storage area. And a lot of it is going unused, so let's filter through the kitchen list next. Here's an easy one, your spice cabinet. Leave a comment down below, how long has it been since you've refreshed your spice cabinet? If you don't know which spices need refreshing, here is an easy clue. If it doesn't smell strong, it's not going to taste strong. The next three items to declutter from your kitchen are the excess coffee mugs, the excess water bottles, and the excess Tupperware. These items become mounds of clutter because you think, I might use it someday. But ask yourself, how many water bottles are you realistically going to use before you run your dishwasher? Now let's talk about utensils, specifically dining utensils. Do your utensils actually match? Are they pleasant to hold? This might seem like such a trivial detail in your life, and I'm not saying it's highly important, but it affects you every day because you use them every time you eat. So think about the restaurant that has difficult utensils, and I'm thinking about the stinking barbecue restaurant that expects me to cut brisket with a plastic knife. It just makes that experience less enjoyable, and food is such a delightful part of our days. So why not make that a pleasant experience every time? Also, cooking utensils. If your kitchen drawers are overflowing, it's definitely time to declutter your B-list and C-list kitchen tools. Just pick out the ones that really work well for you and that will eliminate decision fatigue and frustration when you're cooking. So it can be an enjoyable experience. Oh, this next item, pot holders. I would rather walk on hot pavement on an August day than to use a grody pot holder. And if you think you need pot holders to have a kitchen, I have not owned pot holders in like two years, I think. I bought these silicone coated oven mitts and not only do they actually protect me from getting burned, but they're washable. The silicone can be washed just with like a normal dish sponge. So it's really easy to keep clean and you never have to have PTSD from a pot holder. The next item is kitchen towels, and for this one, please reference the ratty towels rant I went on in the linens chapter. And finally, cleaning supplies. I keep my cleaning supplies under my kitchen sink, but wherever you keep them, how many bottles of cleaning supplies do you own? This is gonna make me sound like a middle aged, but the older I've gotten, I tend to use vinegar and baking soda more than any of the store bought chemicals. But in your cleaning supplies stash, do you have duplicate bottles that are half empty? In which case, that's an easy fix. You can just combine them and throw away the empty bottles. But if they're half empty because they don't really work, then that's the sunk cost fallacy sneaking up on you again. You think, well, I've already bought this, so I need to finish it, but you never finish it. So this is your permission to get rid of cleaning supplies that don't actually work for you. Sorry, spray and wash. And this might be where you crucify me. Let's talk about decluttering clothes. The common objection to decluttering clothing is, but it has sentimental value. And I totally understand that. Our pieces have been with us through good times, bad times, every time in between. We've worn these pieces. They've almost become part of our story. So I totally get if this is the difficult part of decluttering for you. But let's go through this and see if there are any pieces that you realize you no longer need. Item 22 on our list is bras that are uncomfortable. That's almost oxymoronic because I personally don't think bras are comfortable anyway, but I mean bras that are terribly uncomfortable and you don't wear. But you think, eh, I spent money on it, I need to use it, but you don't use it. So it might be time to just cut your losses. Next, any clothes that are torn, worn out, or stained. 
You might be keeping these pieces thinking, I'll just repair it. But if it's been like over six months, I don't know if you're ever gonna repair it. Now what you can do, this works for me, when I go through a decluttering, I see pieces that are torn, worn out, or stained. I set it aside in a pile and I have one week from that day to actually fix it. Sometimes this is like a five minute sewing project. It can be so easy, but sometimes it's much more difficult. And in the back of our minds, we know we're not really going to fix it. And it's kind of like the books conundrum where you bought the book and you think you need to read the book because you bought the book. It's okay. It's time to declutter it. You could do the Marie Kondo thing, say thank you for the memories that it's held for you, but let it go. Speaking of worn out items, underwear with holes. This seems to be like a really common problem. So leave a comment and let me know. No, I'm just kidding. Don't do that. Nobody wants to admit that they have underwear with holes in it, but it's so normal. You think, well, nobody sees me wearing this, so what's the problem? The problem is that you see yourself wearing this. You feel yourself wearing this. And it just chips away at your confidence just a little, so it's definitely time to declutter those pieces, replace them if you need to, but have underwear that doesn't have holes. And another holy item in people's wardrobes are their pajamas. It's the same thing. Well, nobody sees me wearing them, but think about how often you're wearing pajamas. That just affects the way you feel about yourself. You feel a little bit grungier, a little bit less put together. So instead get some home wear, some leisure wear, some pajamas that you can feel really good in. The next item is any shoes that are ready. Is that going to be the last time I use the word ratty in this video? <laughs> I'm not really sure. But shoes can present so much about you. So if you look at your shoe collection and you're seeing a lot of scuffs and tears and stains, it's time to either fix them or declutter them. Moving on to jewelry. Do you have jewelry or accessories that are outdated? And again, not meaning it's not trendy this year, meaning it's outdated to your style. It doesn't make sense. It's something that maybe you have a pair of earrings from <laughs> prom <laughs> and it has good memories, but you haven't worn them since you were 18. Look at your jewelry collection. How many pieces are you actually not wearing? And so every time you decide what jewelry to wear, you're having that decision fatigue of looking around at all those pieces. Make your life easier by decluttering the pieces that you don't actually use. And the last item in your wardrobe to declutter are any clothes that don't honor your current style, your current lifestyle, like if you're working from home, or your current body. Let that sink in. Do your clothes honor your current style, lifestyle, and body? The truth is your life is beautiful and you are beautiful, but if it's cluttered under a whole bunch of things that don't make sense for you anymore, then it's going to be very difficult for you to find your style and feel confident in every room you enter. And for almost anyone I meet, it's not because they have too few clothes, it's because they have too many that are confusing their style. Now, I recently made a video that was a full decluttering process just focusing on clothes. So if you need additional therapy for this, like I have in the past, then watch that video at the end of this video. The last faulty reasoning why we keep clutter around is that it's organized. But the truth is that organized clutter is still clutter and it doesn't deserve to be in your life. So these are the last few items that you might wanna consider getting rid of. Number 29, the items that you upgraded but never got rid of because there's technically nothing wrong with the old ones. Except for that you don't use it. So <laughs> look through your house and see what pieces you don't use because you have a better option that you have been using. Number 30 is paperwork. This is a sticky category because you might actually need that paperwork somehow, but you definitely don't need the receipt for the $10 item you bought at Walmart a year ago because it's not gonna get you anywhere. Number 31 is old post-it notes. At the end of each week, I go through my desk and see what papers can I get rid of so that when I come back to work on Monday, I am clear-headed, focused, and ready to rock. Numbers 32 and 33 electric cords for things you no longer own, and charging cords you have way too many duplicates of. 
if there's a zombie apocalypse and you need to charge your phone and your block charger at the same time and your watch, like you maximum need three. You do not need 17 of those little white cords. Number 34 is the gifts that you received and didn't really like when you received them anyway and haven't put it to use. Now I would love to know, leave a comment, what is a gift that you've received and held onto even though you didn't like, just in case the person asked you about it later on? Let me know down in the comments. For me, it's always been like coffee mugs and candles and you already know how I feel about both of those pieces so they have been decluttered for my home. Now the last thing to declutter to have a more organized home is your mindset that you're just a clutter bug, like clutter is just part of your life. I really hope that you take the time to walk through your home and declutter using the things that I've said in this video, but afterwards, I hope you take just a few more minutes to really feel it, feel in your soul what it's like to be in your home when it feels fresh, airy, light, and you feel free. Don't wait years to purge things that weigh you down. Make it a regular rhythm in your life. If you've enjoyed this video, let me know by tapping that like button. And if you want to do a deeper dive into decluttering your wardrobe so you can have better style, then watch this next. I'll see you next week with a brand new video, but until then, take care.